Blessed day everyone, welcome to our live stream. This is now our 22nd week being in quarantine. And again, let me remind you that August is Preacher's Appreciation Month. And to all preachers out there, in whatever ministry you're involved in, may the Lord continue to bless you and may the Lord continue to strengthen you. The reading for this morning is based from Zechariah chapter 3, and we will be dealing with that, Zechariah chapter 3. A vision of Joshua the high priest. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan is standing at his right hand to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was standing before the angel, clothed with filthy garments. And the angel said to those who were standing before him, Remove the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, Behold, I have taken your iniquity away from you, and I will clothe you with pure vestments. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord was standing by. And the angel of the Lord solemnly assured Joshua, Thus says the Lord, If you will walk in my ways and keep my charge, then you will rule my house and have charge of my courts. And I will give you the right of access among those who are standing here. Hear now, Joshua the high priest, you and your friends who sit before you, for they are men who are assigned. Behold, I will bring my servant, the branch. For behold, on the stone that I have set before Joshua, on a single stone with seven eyes, I will engrave its inscription, declares the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of this land in a single day. In that day, declares the Lord of hosts, every one of you, will invite his neighbor to come under his vine and under his fig tree. May the Lord bless the reading. As we continue on preacher's appreciation, and as I have presented last week, the image, the self-image that preachers have for themselves and how others view Christians and how others view preachers and pastors. For preachers, they know their limitations. They know their insufficiencies. They know their who they are. Yet whenever they look at the mirror because they have been entrusted with God's most powerful tool, with God's power to save, they always look at themselves like a kitty looks in the mirror and sees a lion. But others saw not or see not a lion but a kitty. Instead of looking at the preachers and the pastors with who they are and what they are, all they could see are the flaws, the inabilities, the insufficiencies, the incompetence of the preachers. One way or the other, Zechariah will give us things of that. A little background of Zechariah. And we know that Zechariah is a contemporary of Haggai. They were both um, prophets in the post-exilic period, meaning they are prophets after the Babylonian captivity. They must have returned after the 536 or 539 Edict of Cyrus, telling that all the Jews could now return home to their own homeland from Babylon. And the truth is, the empire even financed the return of the exiles and helped also in the rebuilding of the temple. But, some of them who were there, who have gone back, who have returned after the exile, waited 
and they didn't even care to build the temple. So Haggai and Zechariah started that kind of work. Um, they pioneered that and they encouraged every Israelite to help build the temple. So let's look over. As we could see from chapter 1 verse 1 that Zechariah was a priest and a prophet. He was born in Babylon and he was part of the returnees. And in the book of Zechariah, all we could see is that God had shown him visions, what is and what is to come. Part of that vision that we'll be studying is chapter 3, his vision about Joshua, the high priest. And we will be using that as our basis for this morning's lesson. A visions or a priest's vision of his high priests, just like what we see here. He's just like this kitten looking at his high priest. Is he truly a lion or is he, does he deserve all of the things that he's entitled with? Ito yung mga bagay-bagay na dapat natin makita, dapat natin mapag-usapan. And first and foremost, a disclaimer should first be made. Sa pag-aaral natin ito, it is not a, de a detailed exegesis of Zechariah chapter 3, nor is an explanation of the vision in chapter 3 about Joshua, the high priest. What we will do, however, is that I would, allow me for the time being, that I will just borrow principles from the narrative. Yung buong kwento po, ang pag-uusapan lamang po natin. At manghihiram lang po ang inyong lingkod ng mga prinsipyo doon sa kwento, doon sa vision na nakita ni Zikaraya. Upang sa ganun may apply natin ang mga prinsipyong ito sa mga preachers na napapanahon para sa preachers appreciation. Having said that, let us go to the lesson proper. At ito nga ang nilalaman. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan is standing at his right hand to accuse him. Yung unang eksena na makikita natin is that the high priest was standing before the throne of the Lord. And in the presence of the throne of the Lord, ando dun din si Satanas. And Satan was there saying accusations. Sinasabi niya ang lahat ng kapulaan, sinasabi niya ang lahat ng mga kapintasan, sinasabi niya ang lahat ng kabulukan at lang lahat ng corruption ng high priests. Tinan niyo maigi. Joshua was just there, standing before the angel of the Lord. Either aware si Joshua sa mga accusations ni Satanas, aware si Joshua, or sinasabi ni Joshua that guilty as charged, or Andun lang talaga siya. And yet, here is something that very significant. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was standing before the angel, cloth with filthy garments. No denying about that. What I want you to, however, na gusto ko makita ninyo is that Yung reaction ni Zechariah o si Zechariah, yung reaction niya sa vision. What I want you to see, however, is that, papano kaya, could you imagine, papano kaya ang reaction ni Zechariah? Yes, si Zechariah ay kasama ng high priest na si Joshua. Yes, si Zechariah ay naglilingkod bilang pari under the supervision of Joshua. Yes, si Zechariah ay isang pari at maaaring nakakasama niya ang high priest na yan. Maaaring hindi niya nakikita that Zechariah is indeed cloth with filthy garments. Maaaring kayang first time na may pakita kay Zechariah ang katutuhanan o ang payak na katutuhanan sa tunay na kalagayan ng high priest. That he is filthy. That he is being accused by Satan. That he is being brought before the throne of God. And he is standing there. Ah, defenseless. 
against these accusations. Kagaya din ng maraming mga preachers and Christians for that matter. Hindi lang po bang preachers ito. Even Christians, if you could just go on with that and, and, and we could see ourselves also before the throne of God, accusations are hurled before us. That we are not worthy to be there. That we are not worthy even to call ourselves sons of the Most High. That we are not worthy even to be called saints. Because we are filthy. Madumi. Corrupted. Polluted. And here it is. Oh, I look over. And dami ko na nababasa. I've seen a lot in Facebook. A lot about pastors and a lot about statistics on pastors. So I made it a point that when I, it was, there was a time when I was introduced to a book by the Barna group of companies, just, just like the book I'm, I'm holding this. And Barna gives me statistics every now and then. So I went back and found these things out. Newly revised statistics on pastors and preachers. That 90% of pastors report the ministry was completely different while they were still in the seminary. And 50% of the pastors, or I should say 53%, report that the seminary did not prepare them for the ministry. And what is interesting is that 80% believe pastoral ministry has negatively affected their families. 80%. And many pastors' children do not attend church now because of what the church has done to their parents. Siguro hindi kayo aware dito, pero marami yung mga preacher's kids, napapansin natin na sila pa yung mga pasaway dahil sa mga nakikita nila na ginagawa ng mga kristyano, na ginagawa ng mga miyembro doon sa kanilang mga magulang. Kaya nga, 80% po ng mga dati ng mga anak ng mga pastors at anak ng mga preachers ay hindi natuloy na nanambahan ngayon dahil sa nakita nila na injustice na ginawa ng ibang mga kristyano at kapwa niya mga ministro sa kanilang mga magulang. That's sad. 23% of pastors report being distant to their family. 65% of pastors feel their family lives in a glass house. At ito, iba ang standard Para sa mga anak ng mga preachers, iba ang standard para sa iba. Para sa mga ah, sasabihin ng iba, ordinaryong miyembro lang kami. At sasabihin ng iba, o oh, anak ka ng preacher, kaya dapat ganito ang ikilos mo. O dahil mga, mga uh, anak kayo ng pastors, dapat iba yung standard ninyo. Nagiging double standards. And it is driving the family of the preachers away from the church and away from the ministry. Yan po ang payat na katotohanan. And I'm thankful that mayroon tayong mga figures na ganito na nang pag-uusapan, nakikita. 57% of pastors believe they do not receive a livable wage. Tatlong 57% ito. Totoo nga naman. Just like what I said last week. Gusto mo ang preacher mo maging kagaya ng agila pero bigyan mo siya ng pagkain pipit. Gusto mo ang preacher mo maging kagaya kasi lakas ng isang leon pero ipapakain mo sa kanya pagkain ng kuting, pagkain ng pusa. Kaya nga andi dito mga, mga presentations, 57% of pastors being unable to pay their bills. Nagtatawanan tayo magkaminsan pero alam natin. And 57% of the, those pastors feel fulfilled, fulfilled daw, mas lows Hierarchy of needs, 57% of pastors feel fulfilled but yet discouraged, stressed, and fatigued. Why? Kasi andi dito yung verse 1. Ito na nga nakikita natin. Yung profession o yung gawain natin mga ministro, yung gawain natin, yung pagkatinawag natin bilang mga ngaral. That we are now at the bottom of the survey Yung pinaka tinitingalang profession, the most respected professions, is just above car salesman. Ang baba ng tingin. Sino nag-a-attribute nito? Sino nakakadagdag nito? Sino nagbibigay sa atin ng ganito? Bakit ang baba ng rating? Bakit ang baba ng pagtingin doon sa most respected professions na sa bottom, na sa baba na? Kung hindi natin itataas at hindi natin muli titingnan at i-appreciate ang mga pastors at mga preachers na ito, patuloy po na bababayan, patuloy po na mawawala. And to think 
kahit balikan po ninyo kung ilan na lamang ang mga students sa mga Bible schools, sa mga seminaries. Even sa mga pare nga, nagre-reklamo mga pare, wala na daw pumapasok. Nasabi ko nga noon sa mga estudyante ko, tayo yung tinatawag nilang endangered species. Oh, look at this. 70% of pastors do not have someone they consider to be a close friend. And 84% of pastors desire to have close fellowship with someone they can trust and confide with. Pero ang nangyayari, it has always been, at paulit-ulit yon. At tingnan nyo, there has always been distrusts. At lagi na yung mga inaasahan na tutulong in time of needs, sila pa yung unang-unang aalis at unang-unang magkakanulo sa kanila mga preachers o sa kanila mga kabaro fellow preachers. 27% of pastors report not having anyone to turn to for help in a crisis situation. Ang sabi ko nga, anong mangyayari? Kung yung encourager nagkakangangailangan ng encouragement, kung yung counselor nangangailangan ng magka-counsel. <coughs> And to think of this, napakababa po na ibinigay ng Barna Group. 66% of churches have no lay counseling support. In the church, I would say 100% wala tayong counseling support. Yes, in the absence of hierarchy, wala naman tayong hierarchy, yet, wala talagang counseling na nangyayari. Wala talagang pagtutulungan na nangyayari. Where do we need it? Where do we get encouragement? <laughs> At this time of the pandemic, ano nangyayari? Iniisip ko at this time <coughs> is that there are a lot of preachers out there needing help. Preachers who have been called full-time and that their congregations or some of the members don't want them. Ayaw tulungan ng iba at ayaw, ayaw payagan ng kanilang mga kasamahan ng kanilang mga members to take secular jobs kasi ang iniisip nila ay maging full-time ka lang dito ka lang sa apat na sulok ng simbahan natin dapat nagtatrabaho kasi full-time ka and all of those things na maririnig natin anong nangyayari kaya sa kanila ngayong panahon ng pandemya? Ngayong walang gathering ngayong walang collection na nangyayari ngayong walang anong nangyayari sa mga pictures na? 27% of pastors report not having anyone to turn to for help in a crisis situation. And that is in the statistics. 35% of pastors battle depression or fear of inadequacy. Totoo naman yun eh. Dapat hindi rin magmayabang ang mga mga preachers to think na alam nila lahat-lahat. Dapat maging aware din tayo na mayroon tayong limitations at mayroon tayong mga bagay-bagay na hindi talaga natin kayang gawin. Kaya kailangan natin ng isa't isa. Kaya nga mayroon tayong preacher's appreciation so that at least kahit papano sana maitaas muli ang moral, maboost natin muli ang moral ng bawat isa at magkatulungan ang bawat manggagawa na itaas ang kanyang kapwa manggagawa. All of this, 53% Pastors are concerned about their future family financial security and 52% of pastors feel overworked and cannot meet their church's unrealistic expectations. I remember the time that I was asked, naisulat ko daw per hour from 7 in the morning hanggang 9, anong ginagawa ko? Daily. And I said, mas maigi pang tanggalin nyo na lang ako. Demanding so much. Walang tiwala sa mga preachers, ano? Isipin mo yon, pagawin ka ng, ng note, anong gagawin mo mula alas 7, paggising mo, alas 8, anong gagawin mo? Anong isusulat mo doon? 7, woke up, prayed. 8, no? prayed for breakfast. 9, prayed for... 
O bago lumabas ng bahay, para lang makita, lagi ka nag-pray-pray na preacher. Some of these people around us or around the preachers are not helping them to let their preachers soar with eagle wings. Ang ginagawa, kliniklip lagi. Dahil pag-aari, dahil being supported, dahil tinutulungan, dahil pinapasahod, ang iniisip ay bayaran lang tayo mga preachers. So there it is. Having said that, in a preacher's appreciation, sana matuto naman ang bawat isa. And look at this. 70% of pastors report they have a lower self-image now than when they first started. Tapos kung bibigyan mo ng appreciation, mas gugustuhin nila na kapag patay na, doon na lang daw sa langit sa sabihin, Come, ye faithful servant. Yun lang daw ang preacher's appreciation. I beg to disagree. Hindi po. Kung kailangan natin emotional, social, spiritual, physical growth kasama dyan sa holistic approach, i-appreciate mo rin ang iyong mga preachers at ang mga preachers. And those who need to appreciate them, bagamat naging self-serving dahil from a preacher's point of view, isa po akong preacher na nagsasabi ngayon sa inyo, appreciate those preachers. If no one appreciates them, at least may isang broadcast na nag appreciate sa kanila. Next one. Look at this. All church planting, give me a break. 4,000 new churches begin each year. Look at this. Sa mga nagsasabing church planting, church planting, para lang may may report tayo. Sa mga nagsasabing church planting, 4,000 new churches begin each year. But look at that, the other figure. And this is being backed up by Barna Group at saka sa Fuller Institute of Studies. 7,000 churches close each year. May 3,000 tayong negative. Mas marami ang nagsasara na wawala kaysa nagplaplan kaysa naruruo na dumadami. Come on. Over 1,500 pastors left the ministry every month last year. Ilan kaya ang nawala? One five. Give that five more years. Sino matitira? Over 1,300 pastors were terminated or left the ministry. Pero ito, these are paid preachers and pastors. They were terminated by the local church they were serving each month. Ha? 1,300 each month times we ng 12. Ilang preachers o ilang pastors ang nawala ng trabaho without cause. Kasi may isang preacher lang na, ay may, may isang member na nagsabing ganito kasi siya, nagsabi sa isa, nagganito kasi siya, and so on and so forth. But ito ang nakakatakot among all of this. If you don't appreciate pastors, if you don't lift up your pastors, if you don't lift up your preachers and ministers, if you don't support them, if you don't encourage them, look at this figure, yung last na figure na papakita ko, over 3,500 people a day, araw-araw po yan, left the church last year, 2019. 2020, lalong-lalo na siguro ang figure ngayon because wala tayong pagkakataon na mag-meet together, wala tayong pagkakataon na magkita-kita. How many more left churches? So many things. And so, yung vision ni Zechariah about Joshua, hindi po kakaiba sa atin. The truth is, nothing changed. Nangyari yan noon, nangyayari pa rin yan ngayon. It was then, so is now. Hindi na babago. Yung condition ng mga nasa ministry, yung condition ng nasa leadership, yung condition ni Satan continuing his activity of accusing preachers and accusing anyone standing before the throne that he is not worthy, hindi siya karapat dapat nakatayo dyan, he is filthy, he is corrupted, defiled, hindi malinis. The same thing goes. Nakakatuwa lang. In all of this, in all of this, sa lahat-lahat ng nangyayari ito sa vision, look with me, be with me. 
sa vision, being on such a state na nakita niya yung kanyang high priest, mayroong accusation, nakita niya yung kanyang high priest, sinasabi ni Satanas that he is not worthy to be a high priest. Nakikita niya na ipinagtatanggol siya ng angel of the Lord on such a state, tingnan niyo may higyang ginawa. But the angel said to those who were standing before him, who were standing before nakapaligid kay Joshua, Remove the filthy garments from him. Kung ito magiging batayan, basihan ni Satanas para lang maakusahan itong si Joshua, the high priest, na sinasabing, he is dirty, he is unclean, he is defiled, ang sabi ng angel, remove that. Yung visible, yung nakikita na kapintasan, yung, yung nakikita na inadequacy. The same thing. Ah, napakaraming implications dito. Hindi ba kaya nakikita ni Joshua na madumi na yung damit niya? Or baka naman wala siya ibang bihisan. <laughs> Hindi ba kaya nakikita ni Joshua that he is being accused of this and that? At ang iniisip niya, ano gagawin ko? He is defenseless before the throne. Wala ba siyang kakayahang magbihis? One thing is that ang makikita po ninyo is that he needs assistance, he needs support. On things that he can do on his own, sa mga bagay-bagay na hindi niya kayang gawin, bagamat ito pala ang nakikita nila, madumi ang kanyang damit, ang sabi ng angel, remove the filthy garments from him. Kaya mo ba siya nakakonsider na hindi siya karapat-dapat maging high priest just because of his garments? Remove that garment. Hindi niya kayang gawing i-remove ang garment na yan. So, needs the support of others. Needs the assistance of others. So, sa mga nakapaligid sa kanya, those who were standing before him, sa mga nakapaligid sa kanya, they remove his garments and then behold ang sabi sa kanya ng angel or the Lord himself. Here is now your restoration. Paano panong balikin yung dating tiwala ng mga preachers sa kanilang mga ginagawa? Paano panong balikin yung dating kasigasigan ng mga manggagawang ito? He said, Behold, I have taken your iniquity, yung source wherein you've been accused of. I have taken that iniquity away from you and I will clothe you. Here is the promise. Here is the promise of restoration and the assurance. I will give you clean, pure, Investments. For preachers who are suffering the same, maaraming, maaaring marami ng sinabi patungkol sa iyo, maaaring marami ng paninira na pinagdaanan, maraming, maraming mga relasyon ng mga nasira. And you still stand before the throne defenseless, hindi nagsasalita. Take courage. The Lord is fighting your battle. Ilang oras na ba ginugol mo, umiyak lang, iiyak mo lang sa Panginoon ng lahat ng mga accusations na ito. Gaano na ba kahabang listahan ang sinasabi mo, Panginoon, sana naman. We could not ask to tanggalin, but then we ask. At ito, natutunan natin from Acts. We don't pray for the Lord to remove them. We don't pray for the Lord to take them away from us. We don't pray for the Lord that all of these people may enlighten, but we pray that we preach the word boldly. Yan ang nakita natin sa Acts. Even sa threat na nararanasan ng mga apostles. The same goes with the preachers. Yung restoration at yung affirmation natin in reinstitution need to be done by those who were standing before him or around him sa verse 8 makikita natin mamaya. In verse na kasunod, there is this very significant statement. And I want you to, to see it first. Hindi ko muna ipapakita sa inyo. But, and I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments and the angel of the Lord was standing by. Look at this. Ayon sa kanila, a turban would signify that he had removed or renewed to him the office of the high priesthood, which had been defiled and profaned before. Restoration. Ibalik mo ulit 
yung nadungisan, ibalik mong ulit upang sa ganun makatayo at maka, makalook at eye level o taas na uulit itong dati na dungisan na manggagawa ng Panginoon. He was given that. Total makeover and total restoration. At ang gumawa nito, hindi po yung, yung, yung high priest mismo. It wasn't Joshua did this. It was done by those who were around him. The total makeover was done in the presence of the Lord. And here it is. What makes this statement significant is this. Kung hindi nyo napansin, andi dito yung pinakamahalaga na makikita natin sa restoration and reaffirmation. That in restoring para manumbalik ang dating sigasig, dating saya, dating, dating sigla, dating zeal ng mga nanghihinang mga preachers, community participation is needed. Look at this thing. Those around Joshua, the high priests, were the ones who took away his robe, his filthy garments, and who put on new garment upon him. And they were the ones also who placed a new turban on the head of the high priests. Kung hindi nyo pa napansin, I highlighted the eye. It took involvement from among those who were in the ministry to lift the high priest up. Tinan nyo maigi. And I, Zechariah says, And I, Zechariah said, Let them put a turban, clean turban on his head. Wala siyang karapatang turuan ang mga angeles o turuan ang angel of the Lord. When you want to look, bakit ko nasabing very significant ang statement na ito? is this. Kung hindi nyo napansin, auditing ko lang. The involvement of Zechariah is there. Sabi ni Zechariah, I said. Zechariah knows. Zechariah through vision nakita niya that indeed the angel of the Lord is defending Joshua. That indeed the angel of the Lord restored Joshua's responsibility or restored Joshua's authority being high priests. And indeed, through the vision, nakita ni Zechariah that the Lord reassured the high priests that he is worthy to be one, that he is being restored to his being the high priests. Regardless ano man ang sabihin ni Satanas. Regardless what others say. Regardless what Satan would say. Regardless of the accusations that has been made. Either he's guilty or not. He was restored and he was given a clean slate. And the angel of the Lord solemnly assured Joshua. Thus says the Lord, it is the if and then clause. If you will walk in my ways and keep my charge, then you shall rule my house and have charge of my courts. And I will give you the right of access among those who are standing here. Here now, O Joshua, the high priests. Listen, community involvement, like sinasabi ko, you and your friends who sit before you, samahan, for they are men who are assigned. Behold, I will bring my servant the branch. For behold, the stone that I have set before Joshua on a single stone with seven eyes, the all-seeing eyes, I will engrave its inscription, declares the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of this land in a single day. You promise. That could either be, kagaya na sinabi ko, it will not be an in-depth exegesis, says, but that is a promise. And the coming of the Yeshua, the Joshua, the Jesus, 
Kung ibig kasi sabihin ng Joshua is a variant of the name Jesus. Pareho lang po yun sa kanila. Yeah. And this is what we can see in that day when God removes the filth of the land, declares the Lord of hosts, every one of you will invite his neighbor to come under his vine and under his fig tree. Let me just go back and see these things. Like Joshua, the high priests, preachers stand before the Lord, accused by Satan and his minions. As we stand, filthy and defenseless, some could be true, some could be made up, some could just be mere accusations. But with all the flaws and inabilities or an incom- incompetence of our preachers, hindi natin may aalis yon. You really stand open sa charges ni Satanas. Oftentimes, preachers cannot read the field. Hindi po natin kayang tanggalin at hindi natin kayang ituwid ang lahat-lahat ng mga kamalian, lahat-lahat ng mga sumbong. At ang mahirap nito kapag ka nasiraan ng mga preachers, napakahirap ipanumbalik ang tiwala at napakahirap ding baguhin at napakahirap ding ituwid ang mga maling paniniwala patungkol sa iyo. Minsan nasabi ko na sa mga preachers, nung may mga false accusation, what you did is subtle but fatal. Maraming ginagawang character assassination. At ang mga preachers, dahil hindi nagsasalita, ang mga Kapatira naman pagka nakarinig ng isang bagay patungkol sa preacher nito, sa manggagawang ito, pinapaniwalaan din gagadagat, mga kapatid. Lift your preachers up. Hindi nila kayang tanggalin yung mag To have a total makeover, every preacher must know is this. The Lord is defending our cause. Manatili tayong tahimik sa napakahabang panahon, at ang Panginoon ang gumagawa ng paraan. At ang Panginoon ang gumagawa at itinituwid ang mga bagay-bagay that has been done through His preachers. And we must know, ang mga preachers din ay, the angel of the Lord intercedes for us. If not the angel of the Lord, the Lord Himself intercedes for us. He promises restoration and gives us reassurance that indeed, we are accepted in His sight. We are cleansed. Total makeover or your restoration and affirmation could only come if the community is involved. Kagaya ni Zikariah being a priest, kagaya ng para kay Joshua, friends who sit before you. Community involvement. Sino pa ba ang magtutulungan kundi yung mga magkakapatid kay Kristo? Sino pa ba magtutulungan dapat kundi yung mga manggagawang kagaya natin? Zikaraya among us. Sana may mga zikaraya pa ngayon. Sana may mga sakaryas pa ngayon. Sana mayroong mga tao magsasabing, let them put these things. Make suggestions for God. Lord, pwede po bang itong gawin mo sa preaching na ito? Let them put a new turban. I'm praying that may the Lord put a new turban to all preachers so that you could continue on doing your ministries. So that people could see sign of your restoration and the affirmation of your ministry sa lahat ng mga preachers. Dalangin ko pa rin is that may the Lord recharge us every preacher na nag-lodobat na. Go back. Recharge. May the Lord refresh us your vision. Sana panumbalikin niya yung mga pangarap mo nung kabataan mo. That you wanted to do this, you wanted to do this, you wanted to do that. May the Lord refresh that. May the Lord replenish you with friends, with support, mga, mga tutulong sa'yo. And lift you up, people that could lift you up when you're down. May the Lord rejuvenate you. You've been used up and wasted. Sana papanumbalikin ng Panginoon ang vigor, ang kalakasan na meron para sa ministry. We still got a long way to go. 
at kailangan pa natin ang mga manggagawa sa mga panahon ito. May the Lord bless all preachers and their ministries. May the Lord bless not only the preachers but family, the family of preachers. But most of all, may the Lord bless all Christians and they become ministry partners and they will become those who will come for the defense, who will come for the aid, who will come for the support of their preachers. To truly appreciate your preacher, ang pinakamadali lang is that you show them your support, you show them your help, you show them your trust. Muli, nagpapasalamat po ako sa lahat ng mga kapatid na kapiling natin, na kasama natin sa broadcast na ito. Sana, ang mga preachers, patuloy po natin sila itaas upang sa gayon matulungan po tayo ng mga preachers natin. At patuloy po tayong aasa ng kung ang Ang bagay na ito ay naging pagpapala, i-share po natin para maging pagpapala rin sa inyo. Hanggang sa susunod po. Ito ang kapatid, Ronnie Karyal.